Well, my friends, it is time once again to answer one of life's difficult questions. That is, which coin should I add to my collection next? What is my next coin? Some people prefer to live simple coin lives and collect whole books of dimes or whole books of half dollars or quarters where they all look the same, but they have a different date on them. I choose not to do this. Number one, because it's a little boring. And number two, you rope yourself into purchasing some extremely expensive key date coins or not finishing the set. Either way can leave you feeling a little empty. While it might be a rush to drop a lot of cheddar on a really expensive dime, in the end, it just looks the same as all the other ones. It just has like a CC or an S for the mint mark instead of a D or something like that. I prefer to go after coins that are dripping with history that just set my imagination on fire, you know? Just like, <sighs> let me introduce you to my newest coin. I was tagging along to the antique store as I do sometimes with my wife. I enjoy it just as much as she does, so don't let me fool you. I usually don't buy coins at antique stores because they're usually really overpriced unless they like don't know what they have. I stumbled upon this piece that was marked as a pie crimper. Now let me tell you, I am a pie expert in eating pie only. I've never actually made a pie. Well, I guess you know what? That's not true. I did make a pot pie. I have made pot pie. But as far as like apple pie or pumpkin pie, or blueberry pie, I've, n I've never done that. And I'm assuming this little crimper guy is to like crimp pieces of dough together. Now, whenever Honeybee makes a pie, what I consider the crimp is often much bigger than this. So I guess pies have changed a lot since the 1800s. But I was looking at this and I noticed, you know what? That's a little bit more than just a pie crimper. I see some letter in there and you know what? I recognize that. I bet you anything there's a boot under there. You see, I collect all kinds of weird coins. If you haven't seen them, go back and look at them. I will post a little link up there for you to click on if you'd like to watch the video. But I collect weird coins. I collect Civil War tokens, hard times tokens, times uh, in the 1800s where there is a financial crisis. It was like 1837 through 1857 where there was widespread loss in confidence of paper money and then people hoarded coins and then there was no coins. So then different merchants and, and different people made their own coins and advertised on these tokens that were used in place of money. I think there's just so much history and such a cool story there and kind of relates to these days where paper money is just being like printed willy nilly and, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But so I have quite a few of these tokens, whether it's Civil War tokens or these hard times tokens that were pre-Civil War. But oftentimes they're they're stamped with uh, the city or the name of the merchant. In this case, it was Henry Anderson's Cheap Boot and Shoe Store in Chatham Square, New York. It has the date on it. The one side's got a big boot. It's a beautiful specimen. Mine has a hole in the middle and has somehow been machined or crimped around the edge to make it into a pie crimper. I just think that's awesome. Whenever I see a coin that has been repurposed or re-stamped to make it another coin or a different value, I, it just drives me wild. I don't know why. I mean, just it has all the history of this shoe store, right? And then on top of that, on top of the, the financial crisis that was going on and that backstory, all of a sudden you get to think, wow, who was the master baker who was making pies with this every day? How many hundreds or thousands of pies did this thing crank out? Who ate those pies? I mean, I just, I love, I love, I love the history. So this is a unique, just a really fun piece of my collection. And I'm, I'm just so happy I found it. Uh, it turns out it looks like there are some others of these that are made with large scents. Uh, like the big old copper cents in the 1800s. And I just think it's so cool that I found one that was made from a hard times token. So that shows you that like whoever made this, they couldn't even find a large cent to do this with. So they used a hard times token. 
just the layers of history and layers of story and and just intrigue surrounding this piece are awesome. And I don't think the seller knew that it was a hard times token. Uh, they just had it listed as a pie crimper. So I, I got it pretty dirt cheap. And um, yeah, and then it's got this other end on it. Maybe if I knew more about pies, like if I wasn't so busy eating them, maybe I would know what this back portion was for maybe it's like poking holes in the middle i i don't know so cool and it's probably in new york some some bakery in new york since this was a a new york labeled hard times token i would love to know i will probably never know but that's part of the intrigue because i can just imagine what it was so i hope that this inspires you to find some weird and wacky coins to add to your collection because they're really the best ones. And you often don't have to spend the most amount of money uh, to find something really cool. Please let me know in the comments what are some of your favorite intriguing weird coins. Maybe it will give me an idea for other coins that I would like to pursue. I'll tell you, if any of you find a large scent that has been turned into uh, the Rao I think that's how you say it for spurs, like cowboy spurs, the spiky circular thing that goes on the back of spurs. I've heard and I've seen pictures where someone took a large scent and turned it into a rowl. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Probably not for for the spurs to put on their boots to like kick horses with. I would love to have that in my collection. That's another another really fascinating piece. I've never seen one for sale anywhere. So. If anyone has access to that, let me know because I would I would buy it from you potentially. So anyway, cool. Peace out.